So in the last two years, I've went from 118 miles an hour to 144 miles an hour, gaining 26 miles an hour worth of club head speed. And today I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So today we're going to be doing a speed session. The speed session is going to involve 50 balls all out as hard as possible. I've been doing this for the last few years and it's helped me gain over 26 miles an hour in that time. Okay, Ben, so what are we doing today? So the goal with these speed sessions is to move your absolute 100% top end speed to as fast as possible and ignore contact, ball flight, direction. Basically just hit it like a complete idiot so that we can max out your club head speed because that's all we're trying to worry about. The goal for this is so that when you go to the golf course, you can swing at 90% effort, which is your normal game speed. But that 90% is that much faster than it was when you were at your previous speed. So we're trying to push him to like 150 miles an hour, swinging like an idiot, hitting it off the heel, missing the ball. So that when he goes to 90% making great contact, it's like 145 or 6 or something like that. That's sort of the logic. So... In short, what we're doing is we're shutting off all the data on the track, man, and we're gonna be looking at two numbers, club head speed and ball speed. Realistically, we're really just trying to push club head speed as fast as we can, because like Ben explained, once I go back to my 90% on the golf course, it's gonna be a lot easier to hit the center of the face, because as we all know, if you try to go 100%, you're not gonna be hitting it in the center of the club face, and that's what we're trying to chase. swing right now um, basically ball flight driven for the most part um, there's a couple things that I think we can get some speed out of but for the most part his backswing was very manufactured we really didn't do a whole lot of technical work he kind of just jumped into long drive and we just went after speed so we just tried to get his swing to be as long as possible and he was just speed train speed train speed, speed train now we're a little bit more methodical what we're doing so we're changing his backswing Before he used to basically just lift his arms straight in the air um, have a ton of extension so it ends up looking like this and I can give you a bit of a demo where he's lifting his arms up and then kind of leaning towards the target like this to try and create extra length in his backswing we're trying to build a little bit more structure now where he's you know actually staying and some of his tilts better creating some more depth so that he can therefore rotate through the ball um, a bit more efficiently all that's going to do is move his his path less to the right because he would hit some pretty nasty hooks uh, in competition when he wasn't swinging well hopefully going to neutralize some of that so he can the balls in the grid and uh, you know that's always a good thing okay guys so I hit probably about 20 balls already with the new Aerojet head the LS heads this is my golf course driver so I've been essentially trying to push speed as much as I can with that however we're gonna do a little bit of an experiment see if we can give you guys a little bit more ball speed. So we're gonna go with the um, last year's LTDX head, which is the long drive head, which is two degrees less than what I'm normally used to using. We're gonna give that a shot. The less loft should allow me to gain a little bit of club head speed. I'm gonna stick with my gamer length, which is 46 inches. It's not any different than what I would use on the golf course. So you guys know I'm not cheating and using these long shafts or whatever the case may be. I'm simply just using a 46 inch shaft and I'm just gonna flip out the head. So just finished up 50 ball speed session. Um, as you guys can see, pretty frustrated because unfortunately with gaining speed, it's never gonna be linear. A lot of my students will even come to me and even Ben's students as well is they'll be like, well, I'm not getting faster, I'm not getting faster. It's, I'm used to seeing speeds four, five, six miles an hour faster than this and today I just didn't have it and unfortunately that's just the nature of the beast. Speed training is never gonna be linear. You never know what you're gonna get. It's kind of like the lottery. So the importance is to always show up Put in the maximum amount of effort you can that day because you never know when you're gonna have a good day. And as long as we're increasing the baseline, we're increasing the averages, you're staying consistent, that's what's gonna be most important. Yeah, so unfortunately we wish that we could just like straight line drive it all the way up to infinity and we all swing 150, but it just doesn't work that way. Um, you know, if he, he would have taken this, like, you know, if I would have said you were swinging 135, you know, a year ago, yeah, I wouldn't believe you'd, 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 you'd be, be laughing at me because yeah. he's swinging 118, like swinging out of his boots thinking that's fast. Um, you're, you're going to have off days is no different than anything else. Sometimes, you know, you just, you didn't sleep well, you had a hard workout three days ago and you still haven't recovered from it. 
uh, you know, life stress, all this stuff has an influence and we, we don't really have a, a way to quantify all of it. So you just come in, like Colton said, just bang it out, um, you know, go recover and, and come back in a few days and try again. So guys, the overall message today is to keep showing up because if we had taken the outlook of what I did two years ago versus what I did today, I'm literally almost 20 miles an hour faster in that time and I wouldn't have dreamed swinging that fast two years ago. So let's always make sure we look at the big picture, we look at where you came versus where you are now and make sure that we focus on that and not necessarily how far we have to go. So this is literally no different than losing weight as well. So if you guys are a client of mine, you guys will know exactly what this means. The weight on the scale is never gonna be linear. It's always gonna have floats, peaks and valleys, up and downs, but it's important to stay consistent. We take the rolling averages and then we can take a bigger outlook of exactly what's going on to make sure that you're doing the correct things to get to your goals. So guys, thanks for watching this video of my speed session. I apologize it wasn't that great, but as always, it's never gonna be perfect. So please leave a comment in the question box below. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you do have and make sure you stay tuned for the next video.